Page 29, The Watchmaker's Shop. Well, we have a few things new learning in this thing, so let's just take this a bit of a time, a, a bit at a time. I can't talk, I need more coffee. I'm going to cover the things, the new things they're talking about as I go through the piece. Because we have to cover pretty much everything as we're learning the piece, so I'll just cover all this stuff there. So let's just look this over. Let's go through the routine I typically go through to learn a piece of music. I look it over, it's three lines long. Uh, we have treble and treble clef now, not treble and bass. See, this is one of the reasons I always chuck the clef signs at the beginning, because who knows? They could be both bass clefs, or treble bass, or treble treble. They're both treble clefs. And this something is a little strange when you're not used to reading treble clef for the left hand. I had a time with this. I couldn't do it because I kept thinking bass clef. I would, I would look at these notes and I would play them bass clef. That's what they are in the bass clef. But it's not, it's treble clef. They're up here. That's C and a G. For treble clef, you're just playing them with the left hand. Okay. We don't have any sharps or flats in the key signature. It's in C major. Make sure you knew the C major scale. Common time again, or 4-4 four, four time, a quarter note gets a count. We got quarter notes all over everywhere, okay. Something about a watchmaker, so I guess we're tick-tock on the clock thing. So let's just check the notes and all the rhythms and all that. Right hand, we're starting up here with a D and an F here, except both of them have sharp signs in front of them. So instead of here, we're here. We have a D sharp and an F sharp, you're here. And then they have the natural signs on both, so now you come down. So it's one, two, three, four. And the next line is C and E here. And then you do it again. Never mind what it sounds like, just go with it. Huh? And the last line, you're here. The C stays the same. Okay, so really, I guess we're in this position, we just have to cover these notes. Okay, there's other fingerings we can use. This is a good fingering, we'll just stick with it. In the left hand, we have the C and the G up here. Now, because you're not in the middle of the keyboard, you're now up here, you're a little offset. Some people will want to move over. You'll want to scoot over. Don't, please. Stay right where you are, as if you're going to play it in everything in the middle and you just turn your body just a little bit don't lean whatever you do please because that throws you off balance and that throws the gravity and the playing off you just turn a little bit and you reach a little further is all just up here is all just turn a little bit it's okay and you're up here this is all you do until the last line you need to have so the last two measures it's one, two, three, four, one, and then the last note is a bass clef. So you just come, just lift up and come down. That's all. C's. C's, they can change clef signs in the music anywhere, at any time, as much as they want to. As much as they need to. You always have to be aware of it. That's why when I look at the beginning of a piece of music, it's really, that's the story of it starting of it. It may not be that way later on, but it starts with two treble clefs, and we'll see as the piece progresses as what happens. Here, you stuck with treble clef all the way till the end, and then the last note they went to bass clef. So you just lift up, during the rest you come down. That's all right. Now once I have the notes, you put them together. Well, in the third measure, you're here, it's these, it's here. And this fun, you gotta love this. I need more coffee for this. This is just, let's go to the last line. Here. This isn't getting any better, is it? Rest, 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 rest. That's the clockmaker. Okay. Then once we have that, you get rid of the hesitations. No hesitation, so the clock is just ticking away. Then we add the articulation. Well, they've got new stuff here. They've got dots all over everywhere. A dot is a musical symbol to indicate staccato in music. Staccato, they say short. Yeah. Technically, you have two ways of doing this. 
you can connect the notes. Let's just go to a, a, a C. Let's just do a C pin scale. Remember, a pin scale is five notes. That's all we're doing. Well, I have two ways I can do this. I can connect the notes like we've been doing in the past. It's called a legato. Connect them. Or I can disconnect them. It's called staccato. Those are the two choices you get. Legato or staccato. Connect them or don't connect them. That's it. Now, if it's staccato and it's not, you're not going to connect them, now you got more choices. How short is it? Because I could just barely disconnect them. Depending on how fast I'm going. If I go slow, that's staccato. I disconnected them, it's staccato. It's what's known as a long staccato. Or I could somewhere in between, or I could make them really short. Short staccato. Most of the time, you're going to do short staccato because it's really part of interpreting music. How long your staccato is, that's interpretation. What I'm going to suggest to you for now, for a while, is go ahead and make these short staccatos. Now, the technique for it, there's different techniques, and the first one we learn is what's known as wrist or hand staccato, depending on what country you're from. That's where we're, we're Hold the arm still and you're flexing at the wrist. So just take it one hand at a time. Let's go up here. My belly gets in the way here. I'll go up here. And I'm on the key and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just bounce off the key. Boom. I put back on the key to do it again. Boom, 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 like so. And I'm flexing at the wrist here. That's staccato. Now, when you're doing the scales, you have the C major scales. Now, in addition to just practicing them, now you can do them staccato, too. And how fast you go, you may not have time to put your hand on the key each time. You have to do that, but make it a real small motion. Don't come, don't flap around. Practice the staccatos too. You do that while you're doing the scales because that way you're accustomed to the feel of it and when you get it in the music you just do it. You don't have to worry about it. Now in this piece it looks like they've got staccatos on every single note in both hands. Because you have to watch out. Sometimes you'll get one note or two that are not staccato. and Well the others are. So you're playing staccato in one hand and not the other. You want a challenge? I got one for you. Go back to the C scale. Can you do that in this, while playing a scale? Let's play the right hand staccato and the left hand legato at the same time. You know, nice and slow. Go nice and slow, doesn't matter. Or, and then switch it. So you get that feel of doing these different things in the hands at the same time. It's hand independence is what we're after here takes time, go slow, but it's one of the things when you're doing the scales, you can work on this. You work on dynamics doing the scales. Now we can work on in, in, uh, articulation while doing the scales. You're doing the scales anyway, you just want to work on this other stuff too. That way when you run across it in the pieces, you'll find you'll just be able to do it. So we're doing staccato on it. Okay, the last line, they're all staccato. And boom, 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 each time. Okay. Then I add the dynamics. Well, we have P at the beginning for soft. Piano is soft. Whatever you think soft is. Soft. Both hands here. You both hands about the same on this one. And then when you get down to the last line, we got these arrows, these sideways arrows. We call them hairpins. And one means to gradually get louder, and the other one means to gradually get softer. And they kind of explain them at the top, in the middle there, right above the song. Crescendo and diminuendo. 
I would I give the abbreviations. In the music, you're liable to see whatever. You might see the CRESC or the DIM spelled out in the music. Or you might get the hairpins. Or you might get the whole word. Who knows? It all means the same thing, though. Crescendo means to gradually get louder. Gradually. You're going from one thing up, get louder. And diminuendo means gradually get softer. That's all. Now, the kicker is, how do you remember which hairpin is which? Well, I remember it like, look at the last line. I'm reading music from left to right. So, as I read the hairpin, if it starts at a point that's its softest point, and as the lines get further apart, you get louder. Or if it starts with the lines apart, that's the loudest part of it, and as the lines come together, you get softer. So I do it as I'm reading the music, is the lines getting further apart or closer, that's what I'm doing here. I get louder and softer. So the last line, you're soft to begin with, and you're going to go up, they don't tell you how loud to get. They usually don't. You have to kind of figure it out. And at first, if it'll help, exaggerate it. So it's like here, I'm, I'm soft. I'm going to gradually go up to loud. I'm at loud. When I get to the middle of the hairpins, you look to see whatever note or notes are there. That's your target. That's where you're headed. So this is the first two. Those two Fs, that's it. That's where I'm after. So I'm soft, a little louder. Back down. You go up and back down. Well, that's another thing you can practice with the scales. Practice getting louder. Go start soft, and with each one, get a little louder. And go down. Then start loud and get softer as you go up. Yeah, I've been doing it forever, but it, it helps. You get this control of how much weight you're using here, and you're gradually changing the amount of weight you're using. Gradually. And that's what we're doing here. We just start soft. And, and you end it soft. That's what the crescendo and diminuendo is all about. And you get to remember these now from ever and ever and ever, but you're going to get them, so it's okay. And I'll talk about them as we do them. Now the speed. Well, a clock, whatever. Tick, tock. Whatever. You decide. copy me, you get into it, you make it yours. The natural accents are simple enough. One, two, three, four. One, two. It's like the C is on the natural accent each time. Feel it. One, two, three, four. See, this is why when we got to the last line in the second measure, I said both of these are the loudest part, even though the first one isn't exactly in between the hairpins. It's because of the natural accent. I want to feel the natural accent. One, two, to feel the natural accent and most of the times in music on these hairpins they're not exactly where they go so it's like the first hairpin is just a hair too long it should it should have ended more at the bar line because really you want the two f's to be you have to kind of look at the music and what makes sense musically as to where your louds or softs are don't just follow the hairpin exactly and say, those lines end exactly there, so I'm just going to make this second beat of that measure the loudest. No. The first beat gets the natural accent. It's going to be louder. So the hairpin is just a little bit too long. You have to make these adjustments. Let's play this together slowly and check the notes and rhythms. Now remember on the play with me is I don't do dynamics. I'm not going to do the louds and softs. I don't do the crescendo and diminuendo and any of that. We're just playing notes. We're just checking notes and rhythms. That's it. So I'll give us four counts. I will do the staccatos, though. I do the articulation, just not uh, dynamics. One, two, ready, go.
rest, 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 rest.